Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wheel of Time, Episode 5. This one they're calling Blood Calls Blood. Again, I will say I'm still loving the show. I'll get that out of the way right off the bat. I am aware, though, as I'm watching the show, how much they're going through and how quickly. But it's not bothering me. And I'm thinking if it has to do with the fact that, like, I bring up Game of Thrones a lot. And I'm not saying this is there yet or might not ever be the quality that is, even though I don't enjoy the show that much. So from the beginning, I didn't like the novels based on the Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Fire and Ice. So when the show came out, I thought the show was better than the books for the Game of Thrones. Muddled through season one, everything was set up nice, and I petered off after season three-ish. Never really got into it, recognized the greatness, I've done a podcast on it, and... I stay away from a lot of the reviews. I do see a blurb here and there. And as someone who loves the books, The Wheel of Time, and kind of has his own little issues with the, how it ends, but that is understandable given that the author passed away before it was finished. And um, there's a uh, awareness I have watching the show, but a part of me doesn't care. Like, I was watching another show I bring up since I've been doing this podcast weekly. is the Shannara series that MTV picked up from Terry Brooks. Watching that, I was aware of what they were taking out, what they skipped. And it bothered me because so many other things were bothering me. I think. And this is just, you know, me being honest and... I'm not seeing the things that would annoy me in this show. I'm captivated. I'm really getting into the actors and actresses that seem to be growing into their own. The atmosphere, it's working for me. I think my only nitpick still would be a impactful music key here and there. Or, um, something that would... Well, maybe they're saving it, too, because this is part of the theme of the books and, you know, who's the dragon reborn and that type of thing. But I find myself starting off this episode and just immersed, just totally living in the world of the books. And when I become aware of things that are missing or like what, what they could have skipped or what, what they might have given a character or what they didn't and... It doesn't register as alarm bells or warning signs of a show that I think is missing the mark. It just brings me good feelings of this is a show that I'm liking the representation of. I might look back on it and nitpick it more with deeper dives in that sense, but I don't think I've had a such a good... Um, adaption of a series of books I love and I did once in a while bring up the fact that I liked Legends of the Seeker based on Terry Goodkind's books uh, I don't know what, what's this, this sort of truth type thing um, but I'm a geek who nerd who even enjoyed Xena Hercules for a while but it just got a little too goofy I'm a sucker for this type of stuff uh I mentioned the Dragonlance cartoon that Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman did. I love it. I wish they would have done more. But this is a live action with actors and actresses I don't know, except for the Moraine, who I just happen to know from a couple of things, and some ancillary characters here and there. I'm loving where they're going, how they're picking up the story. I'm not bothered by... The things that I think might be bothering people. And it's going to be interesting to go back and look. Because I'm trying to stay away till episode 8. End of the first season. And see what people's complaints were going in. My, my things are just little nitpicks that 
really have nothing to do with choices they're making about what they're taking from the books. I maybe part of me is saying this is a smart way to do it to get an audience that is not going to be interested in the books to begin with and have no idea what's going on in the books anyway. And in that case, it's even better. I think it's a rare quality to be able to balance these things. And again, maybe I fancy myself a writer of some kind, but you get your book options or your series. There's a lot to take. There's so much you do in writing a book and the styles and the methods and the um, way you have to explain things and draw things out to paint people a picture. You can spend... Um, more than half a chapter and on certain things about the nuances and it's totally skipped in the show they have to get to the point they have to go with these rhythms these beats that give you a little bit of action mystery and you know it just i could see the the balance that needs to be maintained which i think they failed on with shinara and budget i don't know i mean when i look at first season of Game of Thrones me and my friends rolled our eyes on how bad the fighting choreography was but you always knew from the beginning it was just a solid acting core and the writing was good and I was into it this show I'm not even seeing no signs I think the fighting is much better is there a I don't even know if maybe I'm again biased and I'm I'm taking away facts that um, other people might bring up, like obvious sets or bad matte paintings or bad 3D effects, maybe, and things like that, that my brain is just skipping over. I'm just so happy to be immersed in this world. It is a little bit annoying to have to wait every week. And I think that's a trend that uh, you know Netflix spoiled us with, but... That option to watch when I want to watch, do them at my pace, and do a podcast on it. Maybe weekly this seems to be better. Um, but I'm not really one who's always just looking at numbers or who's liking a video. I mean, I don't got fans in that sense. But I don't see major issues with the show. I see little nitpicks. I see a growing love of the characters. And real quick, we'll just go through the type of story. So we're catching up with episode four, The Dragon Reborn, where Logan nearly gets loose. He kills, and Ace of Die kills many people, I believe. And lots of people are in the process of dying or majorly wounded. And Nynaeve displays her power. She taps into the source and heals people. We go a month later. And they make it to Tarvalon. That was one of the places that they were talking about going to the White Tower. And it was one of the subplots that was running through the first four episodes that they knew they were going to when they were split up. It's just for the most part. They're still not sure, but it starts the arrival and uh, an appearance of one of my favorite characters from the book, Loyal. It looks at certain angles of. The White Tower, I'm happy with what they were showing. I did, like I said, I might go back and look and recognize, like you could when I talk about Game of Thrones, like they perfected the walkers and like the dragon looked amazing in most shots. But maybe you, you know, you, before they get there, you see the building blocks of the budget ramping up or more confidence in the show and they could pull more things off. But I'm not noticing that as a detriment here if they are doing that. I'm just, I'm along for the ride. And we have a little hiccup in things that you start seeing people are coming and it's a month later. But Egwene and Perrin are captured. And underlying this is this subtle, yet very, very powerful um, story of... When a water bonds, when an Ace die bonds a water, that protector, that bond is very tight, and they made hints about it, that they feel what they feel, etc. 
that you can tell they're not pushing it so much, but they're really caring and trying to uh, reach out to the mortal who survived his ace to die, eyes to die, dying in that battle. And as you're cutting back and forth, I'm really starting to really love the actor who plays Land, Moraine, the subtlety, and then the real powerful, obvious connection they have as a water and his ace of die. By the end of the show, it really had me. It just, I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. And you got um, this. Well, I have a friend who keeps asking me once in a while, like, oh, about this, you know, they're, they're, they're really trying to make you think this is the Dragon Reborn, and is it misdirection, is it this? And again, this is something that I find really fascinating, because I'm reading the books, I know where the story's going, I was thinking to do, like, a twisty twisty and fuck me over, you know, and change things out of the book to, you know, surprise people. I think that's a great sign. Now, could it be a little risk-taking? Sure. But there is that element going on. You start seeing the development of the characters when Rain's with Matt. It's obvious something's going on with Matt. And they, they even talk about if one of us is the Dragon Reborn. There's this subtlety that goes through. And you keep going back to land, marine, um, the water. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. But that's kind of weird, right? I should be more professional about these things. So I think it's Steppen and uh, Karini's uh, Ace of Die who died. And they even talk about uh, another Ace of Die taking the bond and asking him to be her water. And they have jokes about it. It was actually pretty good. And you are really seeing a connection to somebody who's into psychology and um, you know, human behavior in that sense. You can tell this is something that's known, but it didn't have to be totally pushed in your face. It didn't have to be, um, you know, it didn't have to take tons of scenes of dialogue. You knew they were really looking after Step and they were watching out for him. They were trying to connect with him and um, ease the pain of his Ace of Dye's passing. And it really comes to a point and how it kind of runs with the other story was really enjoyable. We have Eguin and um, Perrin basically getting ready to be killed because Perrin starts to be tortured and what was it, um, Child Valda or whatever? His um, whole premise is, look, I've got the Ace of Dai tied to the chair, Eguin. He believes she can cast, but not that she's an Ace of Dai yet because he's kind of because he's already killed like eight of them. He kind of knows they can't lie and all the little things, but he brings Perrin in and he starts cutting on him. He's like, look, you're going to cast. They try to save him. He gets set free. I kill you. Or he bleeds out. You, you don't cast and you go free. And it's a really cool way of showing you know, somebody who's really so dedicated to their cause and is blinding them. And I'm really going with it. They do a really cool scene where you start hearing wolves and it's not noticeable at first so much. But it really got me. It really brought me back to the books. And you start to see Perrin's dilemma is not only for the fact of his secret he reveals to Egreen That I don't give plot. I don't give a lot of plots and spoilers, but... In the first episode, it's revealed that um, he is the cause for something, and he admits it here, and there's a change in him, and you see it. So he becomes a very viable person now, is he the Dragon Reborn, and I love how they're doing that. Right, It starts with this, and it's subtle here, uh, very undertones going, and then it's someone who's obvious, and wait, it's not. We are having... A little bit of a dilemma with the waters and the passing of an Ace of Die. And like I said, it's not too push in your face, but they're obviously worried about stepping. And when we get to the end, it the show just, I mean, it just broke me. Uh, I've described in 
some episodes before uh, my mom was rushed to the hospital, was unresponsive for a long time in the hospital. She passed away. We had the funeral and the burial less than two months ago. First Thanksgiving without her. And obviously between now and Christmas, it'll be. So it's I'm in a weird place and there's raw emotion there. But when stepping, spoiler alert, big signs going, I don't can't do all that editing stuff, but. I'm going to give a major reveal here. Stepan commits suicide over his Aes Sedai's passing. And Lan finds him because they were talking the night before. He was staying with him uh, as comfort. And he tricked him by using Nynaeve's sleeping potion. Well, you know, tonic. And Lan was uh, asleep. And the scenes that follow are some of the most... Deep, like I said, it is the time of my life. It is a bias or the love for the books. But the way I see it, if you do it good, you do it with, you know, love and talent. I don't care if you change things and shorten it. And yeah, I would want things. Maybe I'll look back on it and say missed opportunities. However, they have a method of grieving. And it might be one of the most impactful things I've ever seen on television. It, this is so fucking ridiculous because it's a fantasy show. And it's 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 trying to balance itself between a Game of Thrones and a, a, a Xena or, a, a, you know, Legend of the Seeker type thing. Where it's starting to show you certain aspects of the show. And you're just, you, you know, you just sucked into this place because of what's going on in my life and love of the books anyway Elaine is chosen as the one to grieve for Stefan and through him they all can grieve and move on and they have Stefan there and then he's instructed to touch him and these are the waters and there's a whole method in the books of how they're trained and so that it, maybe they'll go into that but in general, they're wearing white, and Moraine's there, Nynaeve is there, and um, Alana, I think one of the Aes Sedai who was going to whoop on him, and when he places his hand on him, I, the gist is he's supposed to let the grief out, and let everybody grieve through him, and it is heart-wrenching, and the connection between him and Moraine, you can see it, like, you don't have to explain it so much, uh, you can feel she knows what he's going through. And then he starts letting it out. And, oh, it's just one of my, you know, one of my most uh, deepest personal connections I've had to a TV show in a long time. And, yes, it is got to do with what I'm going through. And it is the time of my life. The things that are just happen to be here at the same time the show is on. And I'm wondering when I look back, will this be... Something I just overlooked. Would it be a whole season one was just me grasping onto things that will just let my mind wander and, you know, escape. And that's what it's for. But I don't think so. I'm, I think it's done with enough quality, enough budget, if you want to say. Uh, the talent is there. And I was riveted. I was emotionally torn apart. And it doesn't stop. It builds up this grieving, and then they start doing, um, I guess it's a ceremony type thing, and he's pounding his chest and one arm and grieving and letting out the screams and tears, and Moraine starts crying and tears, and holy shit, I just lost it. I was fucking, I was just a puddle of a mess, and... If any, if anything, I'll look back and like I did maybe with the prequels and say it came at a time in my life where I needed something. Um, I talk one of my other personal things about what happened at a certain age and camping and going to the rainbow gatherings and hippies and it all changed my life. And you know, looking back at it, I can analyze it differently. This might be one of those cases, but I'm going to say I'm going to go with my objective, uh, you know, the way I can reflect on my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own biases, as much as anybody can. Maybe I could just do it a little differently because of what I've looked into during my 50 years on this world. However, 
I was fucking so captivated, so wound up, and it's just one of the most riveting things I've seen. I am fucking loving the show. The nitpicking angriness is I gotta wait week to week, but that's like the, you know, what I said, Netflix spoils things. So here we have episode 5, Blood Calls Blood. They're on their way to Tarfalon, which is what they were, the subplot was that they kind of had an idea everybody would go to. It skips one month and they've arrived, but Egwene and Perrin are captured. They're doing the plot with Rand and Matt getting to the place. They meet the loyal who's in Ogier. And it's, uh, I loved it. I'm right from the book. I, I'm just so happy Nynaeve meets up with them and there's a feeling of things coming together and having Perrin and Egwene be sort of saved by wolves was fascinating and really showed the change in Perrin that's coming because even Child Valda was ever was like what are you? Also I'm so excited. This is also a part of me that says I think these actors are just really good. At times, they make me feel like they're awkward in certain positions when they shouldn't be, or they are. And it feels weird when you got these people who are like pacifists and they're getting beat up. It was all around. They're trying to tell an epic story in an eight episode for a season because the book, I'm guessing, but from the title of the book, the first book and the last chapter, I'm guessing this is going to end book one however you could do a the episode eight is just first part and what i mean by that is now the first book ends with the title chapter of the next one called the eye of the world i mean that would be episode eight let's say you could hover it there as a cliffhanger and then start season two cap catching back up and kind of doing a different type of storytelling and tell the things you couldn't tell if people are worried about that type of thing. However, I am still loving the show. Every week, I'm captivated. I am emotionally drawn in. I am immersed. I am even aware of... I had... Talking to a friend, I had on my uh, table before this came out. It was in my car. I brought it back into my house. I have The Path of Daggers, book eight of The Wheel of Time. So I'm I'm constantly revisiting the series in different ways, and this book's like 700 pages. I am a really big fan, and if it's not my Shannara books and some of my Dragonlands or Forgotten Realms, I'm so happy. This is again something I might look back on and be a little bit more like, hey, you know, why was just a uh, I was biased, and I was just glossing over things because I wanted to love it so much. I wanted to escape, and fine. But I'm still giving this a thumbs up, a must-see uh, recommendation if you're into this type of stuff. Fantasy, magic, sorcery, monsters, um, a developing plot that's interesting and um, brings people who aren't into the books into the show in a way where I think they're trying to do a Game of Thrones type thing, and they might not go so deep, but if you do it enough and you get the elements of what you like from it, this would be more my thing, and that could be even a sign that they're smarter than I'm giving them credit for. I haven't looked again, like I said, online about the general consensus of the show. I don't want to, you know, mess with that. I want to do a week-to-week thing. And again, not that I have fans, but I'm down to one a week because of work. And, like I said, this is the time of my life, what's been going on. I hopefully to get back to some science podcast and some reading of articles. I'll do a movie here and there that's popped up that I've watched. This has been a little tough, so watch The Wheel of Time. We're up to episode 5. I am loving it. Really captivating. And this one broke my heart. It tore me up. It, I cried like a baby. Just... A very, you know, it let me work through things in a way. And granted, if it's just that, and I look back and laugh at myself, I'm going to give it kudos for that. 
So everybody, I hope you're doing well. It's going to get cold. Hopefully this winter isn't too bad on us. Give the Wheel of Time a chance. Look at it. Check it out. I usually give it a three-episode rule, and I think they did it well. For me, the first three episodes are come to the village, try to protect it, and flee. And you see where the show is going in directions, who got split up. If you want to use analogy or people, it's like, imagine Gandalf and Aragorn come to a town, they try to protect it, then they flee with the hobbit. It's like, there are, there are things that are similar and familiar to you in these tropes and this storytelling. And I am loving it. The Wheel of Time, Episode 5. I am, wow, I just so moved by it. Alright, hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.